Well, in this episode, I talk about this great big object, the relationship between the egg and the Doctor Who screwdriver, and how that relates to Glastonbury. Enjoy. This thing weighs an absolute ton. <laughs> it's like having another man on the front of your boat. But I managed to pick this thing up on eBay for a hundred pounds. I put an offer in and the person accepted it. And so I'm a proud owner of a manual winch or capstan, if you like. And with these kind of winches, it's not so much pulling all the anchor rope in that they're for, really. The most important job that they do is they control the, the way the chain comes out. So if you've got one of these, you can, this is actually a brake here, and you can drop your anchor simply by um, moving this thing here, this move over like that, and this also um, changes position with a lever here. So now this thing can roll and A very very simple object which is it's from the 1970s this and so it's as old as the boat it's 50 years old and as long as it's lubricated and not allowed to seize up it can probably last forever also as long as it's not abused and so the idea is that the chain comes out of the chain locker and across here and the anchor can then, it controls the descent movement of the chain to allow the anchor to be set and then it can also be used to break the anchor out and the final few meters of chain which is all muddy and horrible then you can actually just winch that final you know, few meters of chain up using the winch and set it onto the pulpit that's really what it's for. It's not for pulling the whole anchor road out of the water or it can be used to help. So whenever there's some kind of problem and you can't lift it manually, um, you use this. So for example, you may actually, your anchor may attach itself to a big piece of 
of growing sponge or something like that, some very heavy that's got rocks attached to it. It might actually bring up a big sponge of rock and huge heavy object and you just can't lift it any other way and so in that situation you can use the winch to just get that thing it'll take you a while to get it off the seabed but you won't be stuck unable to do anything and have to lose your anchor or anything like that uh, it's an emergency device and it's interesting i got this object i had to drive for probably the best part of 300 miles, 150 miles there, 150 miles back. So it cost me 100 pounds in petrol to get it, but I did combine it with the trip to Glastonbury. And so I had a nice time, I went to Glastonbury, I had a nice time there in the evening, and then the, I went and picked it up and brought this object to Glastonbury, it's a great big metal object, which is again able to hold much energy. and. I brought the object to Glastonbury, parked it um, on the hill where the thorn tree used to be in, my, in the back of my car and then I wandered around Glastonbury and went to all the crystal shops and uh, had a look at the state of affairs on the ground in Glastonbury and the layout of the crystals in the shops and so on. And was had a very, very interesting, and I talked to many of the people in the streets of Glastonbury and found out that the Glastonbury has got a lot of new people just arrived a few months ago, good people, and that it's moving into a period of creative energies. And this is indicated by certain stones moving to the forefront in the crystal shops. Okay, so... I have this great big object. Ever since I brought it home, I haven't been able to do anything except just lie in bed, been completely receptive. And the egg is on the altar here with the wire, which needs to be posted now. And so you'll see, I'll show you that You'll see, this is actually a spiral. And you can see the camera's looking at that. And there's a positive and negative pole to this thing. This is a male pole, if you like. And this is a female pole. And this is the equivalent of this on a larger scale. And so at the moment there in the crystal shop in Glastonbury, there's a great big crystal ball. I'll put a photograph of this on the movie. And what I've done is um, by taking this to Glastonbury, I've associated this with this ball in the crystal shop. And this has become um, a positive or negative, I think positive, you say, a positive pole of that big crystal in Glastonbury. And this is how things work. There's always um, opposites, if you like. And so um, this is my Doctor Who screwdriver. <laughs> and this now is... Wherever this little boat lands up now is actually landing on the Sea of Moyle because this, this is a word is Moyle here. And um, I thought, well, why, why, what does the word mean? Uh, what is the significance of the word Moyle? And so what I found out after searching on the internet was that there's a special Sea of Moyle that the children of Lee Lur, the children of Lur, is an Irish, old, ancient Irish legend. The children of Lur have to spend 300 years on the Sea of Moyle um, before they can become freed and go to the Isle of the Blessed. And so I discovered all these legends at the same time. So I have this legendary word, Moyle, now, once this goes on my boat. And wherever the boat parked itself up, 
it will be sitting on the sea of moil because there will be the anchor, there will be the chain, and he will be moil written on it. So it's very interesting. Anybody wants to study this up? There's a, there's just do a search for the sea of moil or the children of Lur, how they spend nine hundred years exiled from their people because they will not uh, um, they will not swear obedience to a fake king <laughs> so it's a bit like the time you live in now there are those people who will not swear obedience to fake leaders and um, therefore they are condemned to be turned into swans and to sail for 300 years on the sea of moil <laughs> this is a legend and you know legends are timeless they repeat themselves over and over again. So this is what I've discovered. I didn't know anything about the Sea of Moil or the Children of Lure before I bought this anchor and had to go and take it through Glastonbury and in this process discover that there's more to these things than meets the eye <laughs> in a very strange ancient Celtic way. I'll leave you on that note.